Hello, and welcome to Lessons with Laurie, where we talk about some of the big ideas in mathematics, kindergarten through grade five. In this lesson, I actually want to expand it, kindergarten through adulthood, if you will, because I want to talk about the joy and the curiosity of learning mathematics, because I truly believe that not only for me, but for all children and all people, we really do want curiosity and joy to be a part of that learning. And in this time when so many museums, if not all museums, as well as children's museums are closed, I thought it might be fun in this lesson to look at something that my children used to love at children's museums, and that was soap bubble geometry. So in the process of doing the soap bubble geometry, let's think about the joy and the curiosity that we might be able to develop. To make my soap bubble mixture, I simply added a little bit of dish detergent to water. Some people use light k -Rose syrup as well in that recipe. I did not. I just put the dish detergent in and I was able to stir it up. And then I needed to find a wand to dip in here in order to make my bubbles, except not having children at home any longer, I don't have any bubble wands. So I looked for something in my cupboard that I might have. So I have a bottle opener that has a circlet on it and I'm able to dip it and blow some bubbles. Now, it's a lot easier, however, to blow bubbles if you use a straw that you've dipped into the bubble mixture as well, so that when you break the tension right here, the film tension, it won't burst, and you can blow your bubbles without getting dish detergent all over your face. So that works in terms of being able to blow some nice bubbles. I might also take just wire for hanging pictures and I took the wire, wrapped it around my bottle here to make a, a nice circular frame. I'm going to dip it in order to make some soap bubbles. And if I don't blow too hard, I want the bubble to stay attached to my wand here because I want to talk about surface tension right now. When I've added the, the soap detergent to this, it's, it has increased uh, the surface tension for the initial water that was in there. And as I'm blowing this, I ended up with a sphere. I ended up with a bubble that's attached still to my wire frame. Well, instead of just dipping circles in here, I thought, well, why not try some other shape, such as a triangle. In order to make my triangle, I use some bendable straws, and I know that we should not be throwing uh, plastic straws away, but I happen to have a, a collection of straws that I've had for years that I use with my math manipulatives. And I simply uh, cut into the straw here so that this would insert into another straw. And because they bend, I'm able to form different shapes. So here's my triangle. I want to dip it into my soap bubble mixture and I'll again hold on to it with my hook here. You can see a film has formed. There's the surface tension. It's attaching itself to the three sides of my triangle. And I'm still able to blow some nice bubbles. They're always attached, however, to the three sides of my triangle. Let's try the square, or almost a square here, and given its size, I'm just gonna use my fingers to, to dip it. Again, notice there's surface tension here. It's attaching itself to the, the film is attaching itself to the four sides of my square. And with a little bit of patience, you can get it to form a fairly large bubble 
here. Well, I want to take a moment and just talk about the the math that's going on here um, because I've talked about surface area, the, the surface area of the film. When I blow and make the bubble, however, it becomes a sphere. One of the really important properties of a sphere is that it encloses the maximum amount of volume for the minimum amount of surface area, meaning the minimum amount of material that's used in order to make that sphere. For instance, in this can right here, the surface area is the metal that's being used to make the can. The volume is actually the tuna fish that's on the inside of this can. Or a pizza box. Think about how much surface area there is in this, in this box for not an awful lot of volume, but it has to be this shape in order to be able to put the pizza in it. So surface area and volume are, are two areas that we study in mathematics and the sphere itself, that soap bubble that we've made, has a minimum amount of surface area for a maximum amount of volume. Well, instead of just dipping shapes that are two-dimensional, I was curious what happens if I dip something into my soap bubble mixture that's three-dimensional to start with. I happen to have this pyramid right here. I hope that you can see it. The pyramid has six different edges to it. And I would like to dip something three-dimensional into my soap bubble mixture and see if I can think about that surface tension again, that surface area that's formed with the film mixture. And when I dip it, notice that the film is converging to this central point right here, this central point. There is no film on the flat face of the pyramid. You can see that from my straw being inserted right here, or at least I hope you can see that. The film, the surface area, is being converged to that central point. It's still attached to all six edges of my pyramid, but it meets at a central point. And I'm gonna to try to blow a bubble here now. Notice I'm able to get sort of uh, this, this pyramid within a pyramid. There are other really cool things that you can do uh, with the pyramid as well. But if I can dip a pyramid, why not a cube? So here's my cube and my cube itself was commercially made, but I lost one of the edges, one of the 12 edges of this cube. So I took a paper clip and opened it up and bent it so that I could form the last edge of my cube. And I want to dip this. So again, I want you thinking, I want you to be curious and enjoy uh, the experience with soap bubbles. What's going to happen when I dip it into the water if that surface tension has to attach to all 12 of the edges here, what's it going to look like? Let me dip it one more time. See if I can turn it for you. Do you see that there is a square or in this case, it looks like a rectangle in the interior of that cube. There is no film, there is no surface area, if you will, on the outside, on the face of this cube right now. That's why I can stick my straw right here. There is no tension right there. It's all converged to that central region where a rectangle has been formed. And in the process, it's formed some trapezoids Oh, and look it, I didn't even have to blow the bubble, it came right out. Notice that I have a cube within a cube right now. A cube within a cube, and there's some interesting mathematics about that as well. Let me see if I can enlarge it. Without bursting it, I don't think I can. No, I did not succeed. So a cube, or in this case, oh, there's a perfect square. Look at that one. That's beautiful. So I have some trapezoids. I have some trapezoids that are formed and that are attaching again to each one of those edges of my cube. 
And then if I blow bubbles, I'm going to get that cube within a cube. Well, I'm curious. <laughs> Part of mathematics. What if I take this shape, which is sort of like a sphere. I have uh, two pieces of circular wire that have been attached together so that it's three dimensional. And I'm going to dip it. So where they meet here, you might think of four different sections, four different pieces of wire. I'm going to dip it. Let's see what happens. Predictions? <laughs> and let's see if we can get a good shot of this. That again is attached to the four pieces of wire that are making that spherical shape. And in the middle, I'm getting almost a, an oval here because of the attachment down here at the bottom, the thickness of that wire where the, the, the knots are meeting. So I'm getting a bit of an oval shape. Let's blow another bubble. Sort of a, <laughs> oh, all sorts of cool things that we can do. Oh, I hope you caught that one. <laughs> well, I'm really curious about mathematics and, and not only do I want to dip two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes, I wanna look around my house. Let your children decide what they would like to dip in here as a wand and think about that surface tension, that surface area that is being formed. So some different things that they might decide to, to dip would be a, a potato or a vegetable masher because it's got these little holes in it. I'll let you decide what, what happens when you do that. Or perhaps you have an attachment for your uh, mixer. You could dip it <laughs> and see what happens. And again, surface tension. You can see all sorts of cool bubbles that are being formed in, in there. And the more dish detergent you put in, the stronger that tension is going to be. Lots of bubbles within bubbles there. But as I said, it's about being joyful and curious when you learn mathematics. So I hope that you'll try some soap bubble geometry with your children at home. Thank you for joining me. See you again next time.